Based on that quote unquote pattern matching, uh, the examiner makes a determination in accordance with the AFTE range of conclusions, which presents the following options. One, identification, that's in quotes, identification occurs when there is agreement of a combination of individual characteristics and all discernible class characteristics where the extent of agreement exceeds that which can occur in the comparison of tool marks made by different tools and is consistent with the agreement demonstrated by tool marks known to have been produced by the same tool. So. And interesting here, an interesting point is what it says, in accordance with the AFTE's range of conclusions. So what you have is an organization of people who are saying within themselves, within their small subset of other people doing the same thing, that certain match certain striations matching other certain striations equals match. Now that that is the leap that is being made by the subgroup here of all the people that are doing the matching because they've all been taught. They go to a course and says if you can match thirteen to thirteen, then it's a match and we declare it. Well, right. Well, that's the scientific leap that is unsupported here. Um, that is the and because it's this it's this subgroup of association and when they publish papers they publish papers to their own group, so they're talking amongst themselves within this little close knit community. Um, I interviewed Chris Fabricant from the uh, Innocence Project about junk science, and this is exactly what happened in the bite mark community. There became an association of bite mark experts and they talk amongst themselves and they come up with their little theories and they publish their papers within their journals of just people within that subset of the group. And then that it becomes insular and is not subject to outside testing. So the problem comes, first of all, from the fact that this is a singular organization that is not subjecting itself to outside criticism and critique. Yeah, and of course, that's the weakness of all peer review, because all peer review, the reviews being done by peers of that scientific community who all have a vested interest in the science that they're pr practicing being perceived as of high quality. Okay, so that's identification. Then there are three categories of inconclusive, all of which require full agreement of all discernible class characteristics. When there's some agreement of individual characteristics, but insufficient for identification. So let's see, but they're all in the same class. So the gross, the high level characteristics, the direction of twist of the rifling, the number of lands and grooves, the caliber uh, of, the, uh, of the round and the weapon, those all match, but now they're looking at individual characteristics and they find some agreement, some matching, but insufficient to qualify as a quote unquote identification, as a match or when there is neither agreement nor disagreement of individual characteristics, and when there is disagreement of individual char characteristics, but insufficient for an elimination. And then the third finding they can arrive at in this paradigm is elimination. Elimination occurs when there's significant disagreement of discernible class characteristics and or individual characteristics. So either there's there's inconsistency between the two samples with things like caliber, rifling, those are class characteristics, or the individual characteristics are too different uh, for these to have been fired from, uh, from the same weapon. So there's really three buckets here. There's identification, we have a match, there's inconclusive, and then there's elimination. It cannot have been this weapon. Uh, let's see. According to the AFTE, a positive identification can be made, meaning a match, can be made when there is sufficient agreement between two or more sets of surface contour patterns. Uh, sufficient agreement, in turn, means one, occurs when the level of the agreement exceeds the best agreement demonstrated between tool marks known to have been produced by different tools and is consistent with agreement demonstrated by tool marks known to have been produced by the same tool and means and two means that the agreement of individual characteristics is of a quantity and quality that the likelihood another tool could have made the mark is so remote as to be considered a practical impossibility yeah. but of course they don't know that's don't completely know that. see here's uh, right. a major flaw major flaw is that there is no database by which this stuff can be measured against there is no falsification allowed in this because there is no database of projectiles 
being fired from firearms. When firearms are sold, they haven't been shot. And also, I will also note that the actual um, characteristics of the projectiles being fired changes over time within the same very same firearm yourself. Your 1911 that you've got fires a much makes a much different mark on its projectile now than it did when it first came out of the factory due to use and wear, even within within a subset within a few shots. So this is um, so there's not only is there no database that database would have to change over time given the, the number of shots fired out of the individual firearm. So it's not falsifiable that they can, you can't falsify this statement. They, they, they can't eliminate other possible um, guns. They can yeah. say it was a Glock 14 or a Glock 19, right? But they can't say it was this Glock 19 because there's no database of Glock 19 projectiles or barrels. And, and the wear on the weapon is not linear. It's not predictable because it varies by the the pressure of the cartridge, the velocity of the cartridge, whether you're shooting uh, lead or jacketed ammo out of the firearm. All produce different levels of wear. Um, let's see. The, AT, the AFTE acknowledges that, quote, currently the interpretation of individual identification is subjective in nature. Well, what the hell is that? That's not science. That's art. They're engaged in the practice of an art. The AFTE theory provides no objective criteria to determine what constitutes the best agreement demonstrated between tool marks produced by different tools or what rises to the level of quote unquote quantity and quality of agreement demonstrating a practical impossibility of a different tool having made the same mark. There are also no established standards for classifying a particular pattern or mark as a subclass versus an individual characteristics. I mean, this is all just a hot mess. They, they use words that make it sound like they have standards, but when you examine the standards, they're not standards. And, and you might want to think about how powerful this testimony would be to a lay jury. You've got a guy who talks about, I've got all these credentials. I've been doing it for decades. And big things. <laughs> I've taken hours and hours of study. I've hundred thousands and thousands of firearms. I never get it wrong. And this is a match. I mean, that's a pretty powerful weapon that the state will be employing against a defendant, wouldn't it? I mean, the, how would the jury ever be able to sort this mess out? 